and the the translation is Thor has us Thor and Odin Good morning. How's everyone today? It's 9.25 on a rather nice spring morning in Scottish Borders. And decided to come down this little road. We're out on the northeastern side of Hoyk. Um, it's a gorgeous little road. I mean, look at that stream down there. That is amazing. All the daffodils are out in bloom. The trees are actually starting to get a few leaves on them now. We've got all this, the white stuff that you see in the hedges, that's wild garlic. I wish you could smell this stuff, it's amazing. I was happily grazing in the field, completely oblivious that um, there's an apocalypse happening and we're probably heading straight into the Battle of Armageddon. In all serious the seriousness though, things are pretty grim just now. There's talk that as opposed to um, slackening the rules in this country, they might be tightening some of them up because um, there's a lot of people who are not taking this seriously. And the thing is, it's not just their lives they're gambling with, it's other people's. Um, I should point out at this stage that I have, um, I went down to the local police station the other day and I've got express permission to do this, so long as I follow certain ground rules. And those are... Uh, firstly, that I stay within four or five miles of Hoyk. Secondly, that I don't visit other towns. Uh, thirdly, that I don't ride in a group or mingle with other people without social distancing. And, hang on, thank you sir. And fourthly, that um, I've not to ride like an idiot. <laughs> and I think under the circumstances those rules are very fair. As much as I would like to ride like an idiot. You know, I grew up... Well, some people say I didn't. Um, and I've never grown out of that whole love of speed and acceleration thing. Although I am getting better at controlling my 
impulses to rip the throttle open. So, yeah, I think I can um, stand by those ground rules. Delivery guys. Look at that one, amazing little house. There's a bigger one behind it, but that'd be a cracking little uh, little place to live. So yeah, I think we're just going to take a nice little leisurely ride around a few of the back roads. Oh, I should say that the reason I have the permission to do this is because my MS, I can't walk or cycle for exercise like um, most other people can. Oh, let us, let's stop here a second. There's nothing behind. Wow. That is superb. Hey, uh. Oh, not bad. I've noticed since this um, this pandemic started, people in general seem to be more polite than usual. I don't think I've waved so much on on a journey in my life and that's one of the wonderful things that I think is going to come out of this you know every dark cloud and this is a very very dark cloud has a silver lining as they say and I think that it is going to change people in quite dramatic ways So this is Hoyk Moor, or as the locals call it, the Mayor. Very popular spot with dog walkers and hikers. But it's better known for one thing around here. You'll notice in front, it's hard not to notice, there's a, a racetrack a horse racing track and every year um, Hoik has a festival called the Common Riding. There's Common Ridings all over the border in lots of towns and up into almost up to Edinburgh and what they what they celebrate is not only the history of the town um, and specific events in the town's history. Uh, for example, here in Hoyk, in 1513, you'll see it says 1514 here, this is a repeta representation of a monument that's at the other side of Hoyk. Um, I'll take you down to show you that another time. But in 1513, on the 9th of September, I think it was, was the Battle of Flodden Field. And England and Scotland were, were spoiling for a fight. And so they met at Flodden, just outside the village of Brankston um, in Northumberland. And it was the largest battle between Scotland and England as far as troop numbers are concerned. 
Scotland got an absolute kick in. And the men of Hoyk were there. Pretty much all the men of Hoyk, everyone of fighting age. And the town lost all its men. A year later, in 1514, word got to the town that uh, an English raiding party had crossed the border and were near Hoyk. So the young boys, in their early teens, I think the oldest one would probably be 16 years old, something like that, they got together as many weapons as they could find and they, they snuck down to where the English encampment was, uh, a place called Horns Hole, which is about two miles out to the east of town. And they attacked the English raiding party and they gave them a thorough kick in and won. And so they brought back the, the English standard back to the town. And that's what we celebrate every year. And this is the, the town's standard. You see it says 1514 on it. And that's obviously because that's when the Battle of Horns Hole was. And one of the, the town's symbols is the horse. Is a statue that's in the middle of town called locally as the horse and it obviously depicts um, one of the lads taking the English standard. So there's all that to go into over the summer if we don't get out to do proper riding. And you'll also see on the, the gate here now it looks like it says Terry Bus, but it's actually pronounced Terry Bus. Terry Bus and Terry Odin. And these words come from a song. Um, and they were, which is sung at the common riding, but they date back far, far earlier than that. This, this is the town crest. And you'll see at the bottom it says Tir e bus e Tir e Odin And that's Norse That comes from Vikings who settled here in the early Middle Ages And the, the translation is Thor has us Thor and Odin. And it kind of stuck. I think that's pretty cool, really. <laughs>